Hello and welcome to another perspective drawing lesson. Last week we looked at two-point perspective and um, one of the limitations of two-point perspective is that it's not, a, not the easiest way to show things that we're looking up at or down at. It's fine if the objects are level with us on eye level on the horizon, um, but not so good if we're looking up or down. For that we need three-point perspective. In three-point perspective all three axes are affected by vanishing points. We see in one point only one of them is, in two point two of them are, the verticals are always vertical, whereas in three point all three axes are going to go off to vanishing points. So let's have a look at a few examples. Here's a photo and we're clearly uh, looking up at these tall skyscrapers and let's have a look at what um, the axes are doing. Where have my pictures gone? There we are, left. So here I've traced lines following the top edge of the building and following these um, these windows in these buildings which are all they're all parallel to each other so they can continue on these windows and I've traced them all the way back until they cross each other over here and this is our vanishing point and as you'll know by now vanishing points sit on our eye line so I've drawn that in as well. Then I've done the same with our right vanishing point. So here I've traced this face of the building, the top edge, and the tops of these windows. Extended them all the way until they crossed each other, on, and thankfully they crossed on the eye line. And there's our second vanishing point. And then, because this is a three-point perspective with these verticals going off to a vanishing point as well. Um, I've traced those as well. So here we are tracing the corners of the buildings all the way up until they meet up in the sky. And there's our third vanishing point. And there's a three-point perspective. And um, we could we could take this photo just out of interest and correct it. So we've stre I've stretched this out artificially to remove the third vanishing point. So that this is like two, this is a two point perspective picture now. This these angles down here go off to the vanishing point. These angles go off to a vanishing point, which I think might still work. I think I did line them up. Um, so here these go off to the vanishing point. Top of the building would go off down to there. Tops of these buildings would go off down to there. Um, but everything vertical is vertical, just just as it would be in two-point perspective. But you can see, because it's so far away from our eye line, there's a lot of distortion up here. When you, the further you get from this eye line, the more distorted these corners of the, the buildings are going to be. Um, there we are. I extended the verticals down till they reach the ground, and it just doesn't look quite right. It's a bit peculiar. Um, I think you'll agree that this one is a. Uh, much more natural looking. So let's hide these and we'll construct a box in three-point perspective. Let's get myself a suitable pen. So the first thing is we'll draw, we'll, we'll do a box that we're looking down on. So here's our eye line and we'll put a couple of vanishing points and I'll faintly draw some guides in, so some parallel lines coming from the vanishing point. So here we are, that's formed a, a top edge of a box, which will make a bit firmer. Let's just tidy that up a tiny bit. Um, and now we need our third um, vanishing point. So these verticals from our cube, which we're going to draw, need to drop off down to a vanishing point down below. And the distance of this, you kind of want, as a rule of thumb, see the distance we've got between these vanishing points. You also want that between these vanishing points. So it's going to come down here somewhere. I'll put a vanishing point. So. We'll, 
um, take parallel lines from that vanishing point to our corners. We can bring some more down for the sides. Nearly there. So there we have a cube in three-point perspective. And um, just as with two-point perspective, well, it, and one-point perspective, they all had limitations as to how far you could stray from the vanishing points or how close you could get to the vanishing points, how close you could stray from the eye line before you got um, nasty distortions. It's the same with three-point. So if I make kind of a triangle by joining these vanishing points, not kind of a triangle, an actual triangle. Um, the air, the safe area to be working is within this triangle and not getting too close to any of these corners. If you, the, the, the closer you get to these, to your eye line and to these vanishing points, the more distorted things are gonna get and the more you're pushing what would feel right and natural. So, um, so somewhere around here, you'll be able to place various objects and uh, it'll feel all right, you know, you can work with straight lines and it'll be fine. And what's interesting is that you can rotate this and now you can think of that as your eye line and down here is now the bottom vanishing point. Or we can rotate it the other way, the same thing again. So it's really just, that's all that's going on. As, yeah, one thing I should say is that, as you can see, your vanishing points, because you're looking down or up at an object, your eye line is often going to be out of your drawing area and your vanishing points, because they're far spaced, are often not going to be in the drawing area either. So in the final episode, I'll show you how you cope with that, because most of the time when you're doing perspective drawing, or nearly all the time, your vanishing points, or at least one of the vanishing points, won't be on the page and you'll have to work work a way around that. Um, so I'll show you a few things like that uh, in the final episode and uh, we'll do a quick recap on everything that we've learned so far. Hope you found that interesting. See you again soon.